Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Samuel with Cedar Pine Designs and in today's video I am working on a collaboration with a YouTube buddy of mine. His name is Colt. His channel is Stuff in Seattle. He has some very cool content. We're both working on the same almost identical piece. It's a four drawer mid-century dresser tall boy. If you head over to his channel, it's called Stuff in Seattle. I'll be showing you um, some screen grabs right now in a second. He's got a ton of content on here he's got a lot of tips and a lot of tricks if you want to get into furniture flipping um, he also likes to do breakdowns to show you what he sells his stuff for so go ahead and go over there check it out now let's jump straight into the video and get our hands dirty as usual I like to take all the drawers out and any hardware if any which this one does not have any hardware um, it does have some legs but I take those off later all the drawers were lined with the liner but it wasn't um, that sticky kind so it was very easy to take out and look at all that dust this is why I love to clean all of these dressers a lot of people ask why um, dressers are clean the way that they are it's because they just they store a ton a ton of dirt and grime and it's just a good idea to get all of that taken out during the process of taking all the drawers and hardware out is where I like to check for any structural damage and on this piece there was a few drawers where the dovetails did um, you know, work their way loose, all the glue that was in there before dried up and it's not holding on anymore so I just apply some new glue. I'm using Tight Bond 2 which is a great glue, dries pretty quick and because I don't have clamps long enough to clamp this one together I'm using a pin nailer to secure them. Um, I mean it's better than just glue alone so that's the process I took for that one the cleaning product that I like to use is TSP degreaser I mean I've had the same bottle since I've started this you just dilute it anytime you run out and this stuff has lasted me so long it's ridiculous um, degreaser isn't always necessary you can use like soap and water but that's just the route that I take and Right here in the, this clip of the video, I'm using 150 grit sandpaper, being very careful at the edges of that veneer so that I can take it all the way down to bare wood because for this piece, most of it, I plan on doing stain, but I wanted to add a little bit of uh, paint and contrast to it because the top is for mica and that stuff just looks terrible. So a lot of this piece, um, for the video is going to be a lot of sanding. It's just uh, there's probably a good three to four hours of sanding all the sides down and all the drawers, scuff sanding and hand sanding all the areas that are going to be painted like this trim piece right here. This is going to be painted as well as the top which is why I didn't go down to bare wood and formica on the top is more of a plastic anyway. So this dresser did come with some rolling wheels, which I've never seen on a dresser before. Uh, it's kind of cool, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep them on or not, so I just removed them for now, and then um, later on in the video, you'll see what I planned on doing with those. I'm just hand sanding everything with 150 grit sandpaper, so that way the paint has something really good to stick to, and I'm using a Carrington color. It's almost like a mix between walnut and red mahogany. It's not a pure brown it has like a little bit of a red hue to it and that's the color that I chose to use on this piece so the stain that I'm using for this piece is made by Verithane and it's their premium line it's a one hour dry time product it is oil based so I like to play things safe and make staining the last thing that I do for the day before I uh, call it quits and I allow this thing at least 24 hours to dry before I come back and do any kind of uh, taping off of any sort or clear coating or anything like that. One thing that I did notice about this piece is that on one side of the dresser it has this really, really unique um, veneer pattern. And the other side doesn't have the same. And I wish that it did. Not to say that it's not beautiful on the other side. But it definitely really looks super unique on one side of it. Um, the feet, I did decide to try and hand sand them down because I am going to paint them gold as an accent. 
and I'm still at this point not sure if I want to keep them or not because the dresser looks super good with or without them. So I am using Rustoleum's metallic. I just threw them on a piece of cardboard and I'm just giving them, I'll probably do like two to three coats. So I'm not too sure how it's going to hold up though because as you can see, um, all the original finish did come off on the part that actually makes contact with the ground. I'm not sure where you would roll it that would cause all of that finish to come off, but that's one of the things that I'm worried about. So now that the stain has had some sufficient time to dry, I am taping and masking off all the areas that I did stain because the top, like I said before, is made of formica and it's uh, plastic, so it's not even real wood. So I want to paint that. And because I didn't want to just paint the top alone, I am painting all the drawer dividers in the front black and the base black as well, just to give it a little bit of contrast. I'm using Bears Premium um, latex paint. I do mix it with water. It's limousine leather and it has a built-in satin finish and it has a built-in primer. A lot of people say, why don't you prime your stuff before you paint it? A lot of times that's not necessary. Um, even though people will tell you you have to, I've never had an issue, especially because I use a polyurethane over top of it. Now that the paint is nice and mixed up, I go ahead and I apply three coats of paint with stuff sanding in between each coat. Usually after the first coat, I'll use maybe 150 to 220 grit. And then for the second coat, um, before I apply the third and final coat, I'll use 400 grit sandpaper just so that it scuffs it enough smooths it out but doesn't leave a lot of scratches behind. So just as a reminder this is a collaboration video with a YouTube buddy of mine by the name of Colt. His channel name is Stuff in Seattle. He also has a TikTok and Instagram. He does amazing work. I'm going to link his video in the description below as well as his YouTube channel if you want to go ahead and give him a follow and check his stuff out. So right here I am using 400 grit sandpaper just to give it a light scuff sand because I'm going to apply my final coat before doing my polyurethane top coat. So if you've been following me for a while now, you know that I like to use some of the same brands and same stuff. Um, this is Verithane's water-based polyurethane with a satin finish. This stuff for me works amazing. I've heard of people just applying this stuff um, by itself alone and I've noticed that it does cause some streaking, cloudiness and hazing. So if you mix a little bit of your paint with the top coat as I did, um, it really eliminates all of that and it really gives your top coat some nice depth to it without looking like just a clear plastic coating over top. Now that all the paint and top coating is done, I'm removing all the tape and masking paper to reveal that nice beautiful wood grain. For the top coat, I did do three coats with sanding in between each coat with 400 grit sandpaper. For the wood, I decided to go with a beeswax. I'm using Howard's Feed and Wax to go ahead and seal up all the exposed wood grain. And it doesn't really necessarily seal it up, it just gives it a really nice conditioned, rich look. And that's going to allow the new owner to polish this thing up and make it look nice and new whenever they want. I'm using SC Johnson's paste wax so that way I can wax up all the drawer slides so that way all the drawers glide in nice and easy. Now that everything's waxed up and ready to go, one of the last things to do is to put all the drawers back in, wipe this thing down and get it ready to go. But I do still have those roller feet. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to put them on or not, so I threw them on anyway, just so that I can get a look at how it's going to turn out. Please let me know below if I should keep them or take them off. And with that said, let's go ahead and check out how this piece used to look. I am super excited with the way that this one came out. Just a little hint of black really made all that wood grain pop. Um, let's go ahead and go over the numbers for this one really quickly. I did get this piece for free, believe it or not. And I only put maybe about $30 worth of material into it because I do have all of my stuff in bulk and it was already in my stock. So I did sell it for $400. So that's $370 profit. And this project honestly didn't take me very long at all. 
Just a really quick thanks to everybody who stops by and watches all my videos and supports my channel. I really appreciate it and I can't wait to see you on my next project. And don't forget that this is a collaboration cult over at Stuff in Seattle. I'll have all his links in the description below.